Alright, what's going on guys? Here we go. I'm starting my second video. Uh, this is S, and today I'm going to be doing a quick orbital tutorial along with um, EVA and IVA, which are extravehicular activity and intravehicular activity. I'll explain that once I get into orbit. Um, and I built this quick little ship right here called an orbiter. Um, this is actually a very simple ship. It might look complex if you're if you're new to KSP, but uh, trust me, once we start doing things like getting to the moon or going even between planets, they'll get much more complex and much larger. But uh, this will just get us into orbit. And I think I'm just going to, you know, jump right in. Let's launch. Now, the first challenge that it comes, or that comes when you're playing a uh, Kerbal Space Program is uh, getting into orbit. Getting into orbit is your is your first hurdle and uh, I'll try to get you, th you guys through that today. So as always when you start on the launch pad you should always click T to start the SAS. That'll keep you pointed straight up when you launch. Uh, throttles all the way up and press space to launch. Got a bit of a slow lift off here but that's that's alright. Nope, a little bit of glitching down there. Right off the bat, I'm going to angle us so that we're pointing about 70 degrees. Um, I'm just going... See, the 70 degrees, uh, it's actually 20 degrees towards the horizon. But I usually go uh, in the direction of 90 degrees, the heading of 90 degrees. That's just because I like to orbit right around the equator, because the, the Kerbal Space Center is right on the equator of this planet. Um, you could go any direction that you want. It all really depends on what you're doing, what the particular launch is for. Uh, for instance, if you're if you're going to the moon, you're probably going to want to launch uh, towards 90 degrees or 270 degrees. It really doesn't matter all that much, but 90 degrees um, and 270 degrees, that's just horizontal orbit. Uh, if you're going to launch space, space space stations, which really aren't implemented into the game yet, but you can just launch things that orbit around and they look like space stations for your own personal amusement, that's fine too. Um, anyway, I'm going to get this thing a little more angled towards the green dot, which, if I haven't mentioned before, is uh, mark, a marker of your current orbit trajectory. And we're about to run out of fuel on the first stage, so here we go, and three, two, one. Got a nice lift off here. Goodbye, second stage. Or rather, first stage. Alright. And... Up here is the atmosphere meter. Um, you're not considered truly in orbit until your orbit is all the way out of the atmosphere, all the way around. Because uh, if you skim the atmosphere at all, you're eventually going to fall back to the planet. Anyway, we've got some good um, vertical movement going, so let's angle it down just a little more, maybe about 50 degrees, or 45 actually, only about 45, and press T to hold the position. Uh, and press M key to get to the map screen, you can see your, your trajectory. For instance, this is the apoapsis, the highest point in the orbit, and the rest of it is your projected trajectory, and it changes because we're speeding up. What I think I'm going to do is, that's pretty high, so I'm going to get out of the map screen, turn off the, the motor, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until we reach the highest point and then burn again. Alright, should be out of the atmosphere now. And there we go. So let me just, and you can actually control the rocket from inside the map screen. You just push that button down there to bring up the nav ball and you can see your throttle and your uh, trajectory and all that. We just passed the apoapsis, so we're going to get right there and rockets. You can barely hear anything. Yeah, trajectory is going really fast. Bring down the 
throttle just a tiny bit. Got a little bit of fuel left, it's not a whole lot. We're about ready to separate to the final stage. And we have a periapsis. Periapsis is the lowest point in the orbit. Um, this isn't a great orbit because there's a quite a difference between the apoapsis and the periapsis, but it doesn't really matter for this video. If I were to want to make this or this uh, orbit pretty uh, circular, I would get to either, uh, either end the apoapsis or the periapsis. And if I was at the apoapsis, I'd burn forward to bring the periapsis up. And if I was at the periapsis, I'd burn backward to bring the apoapsis down. It makes a lot more sense once you once you get in the game and start playing. But anyway, since we're here, actually, I might just do a demonstration of that. So I'm going to use the time warp up here. Oh, turn have to turn SAS off before you turn on the time warp. So we're just going to warp around the planet and get back to the apoapsis and fire the engines again to bring us to bring the periapsis up to about uh, 130,000, 140,000 almost all the way around all right and we're about there right now all right and I gotta get situated which is unfortunately a little difficult to do in a rocket that is not that has no thrust on it you can exert a little bit of force on it but it really um, for really high speed uh, change in maneuver in space without thrust you're going to use what's called RCS and I don't have that on this ship but I'll show that, that to you later. Anyway just start burning a little bit and you can see the periapsis coming out. Oh that's quick. Oh, oh. And they jiggle a little bit when they're close so this is a pretty circular orbit. At this point I think we're just gonna ditch this stage so we're ready for the final stage. Three, two, one. Beautiful separation. I love watching things come apart while in orbit. All right, cool. Now we're in the final stage. And here is where I will just go ahead and show you guys the uh, EVA. Actually, I'll show you IVA first. Got it. Stay still. Stay still. SAS to stay still. Except that on a craft like this, it can overcorrect quite a bit. Anyway, let's just get, uh, hello, Al Kerman. I, you go over here and you click the IVA button, and it transports you to inside the capsule. You can see a nice view of the, of the planet out the window. And let's just get, get a look around. Over here is the throttle. You can control stuff like that, except for the engines have not been activated, so it didn't do anything. Nav ball uh, with the heading indicator. Altimeter, uh, vertical speed indicator. Radar altimeter, which is really good for when you're landing on on uh, you know, other bodies, um, and sometimes sometimes the altimeter will tell you, oh, you have thousands of meters to go, but the the ground is actually a couple hundred meters below you, and you end up crashing and burning, and it's it's not a fun time. So this will tell you that uh, atmosphere gauge, pretty much everything you can find outside of the cockpit, you can find inside the cockpit as well. And you see your little guy over there, and you can see the planet over there. Anyway, that's IVA, and let's get these guys out. So let's take Al on a little adventure. You press EVA button, and would you look at that? We're out of the capsule. You can zoom in and out. Uh, use WASD to move around. Um, and right here is actually the extendable ladder that I put on earlier. So what you do is right-click it, press Extend, and it will come out. And um, this will... You know, you can crawl around on ladders, and for instance, once you get here, you can uh, press the A and D buttons to turn on the ladders, crawl around. You know, we could actually go all the way around this capsule because we have ladders all the way around. Coming back around, and you're probably saying, "Well, you know, that's cool. I guess, I guess that's all right." But you know, you have to stay on the capsule. You have to, you have to stay where you have ladders. No, you don't. Let's crawl all the way down, and we're floating in space. Oh man, I do not know if I would have the guts to do this in real life. Oh, that'd be scary. Uh, that right there is the piece of the rocket that we just separated. Um, but you might be saying, again, 
well, I guess you're screwed now. Like you're getting, you're you're far away from your capsule. No way to get back. Nope. We have jetpacks. Activate your jetpack by pressing R. It'll orient you up and in the direction that you're facing. And uh, use the standard controls W A S T to move around. Shift and Control to go up and down. Uh, just think of it like the throttle in the, in the rocket. And you can fly around. Um, and the space bar. When you're not on the ground, the spacebar um, orients you in the direction that you're looking. And uh, the fuel for this is not infinite, actually. Um, you have a finite resource in your uh, pack. So what you do is you right-click your, yourself, or you, the, the, the guy, to see how much fuel that has left. 92%. Um, and you might think that, you know, it's like, wow, that's not a lot. It was like, it, it runs out really quickly when you're, you know, for instance, on, on the moon or flying around a space like this. Anyway, we get back by uh, just moving toward it slowly. You don't want to uh, n not knock the trajectory out or send your little guy flying. And you just press F to grab when it when it displays it like, like that. And you can grab, crawl back up, and you get in the capsule. All right. Now, now how to get down. Um, to get down, you can see on the nav ball is that that is the prograde orbit. We also have another marker in the other direction, the exact opposite direction of the, where, where you're heading, and that's a retrograde marker. And what, what to get out of space, you just orient yourself to that, press SAS or just stay there, um, and then you begin a burn. And I will sh and I'll demonstrate what happens on the map screen. And I haven't actually activated the rocket, so. Activate, and you can see that the, the orbit quickly changes. It's going away quickly, and as of right now, we will no longer be in orbit once we hit that spot. Actually, the Kerbal Space Center is right there. We might be able to land close to it if we have enough fuel. So we're just killing our, our orbit. And uh, if you care at all about about the little guys, and you care about them getting back to their home, um, you'll always have enough enough fuel left to get home. My first experience with orbiting was um, it actually wasn't a true orbit. I was still uh, skimming the atmosphere just a tiny bit, but they got into orbit, and um, I had no way to get down. So I just had to wait and wait and wait for the atmosphere to slow down the capsule enough to uh, to come crashing down. And it took about uh, in-game time, about 40 days of in-game time, and about two hour or four hours of, of real time. You can accelerate more than that. Actually, I'm just going to retract this ladder. No, nope, not decouple. That's, that'd be bad. Yeah. At this point, actually, it would not be bad to decouple. I could probably just do it right now. In fact, I'm going to. Goodbye, capsule. And we're just floating. I'm getting a little bit of lag. Capsule, stop freaking out, okay? Stop it. Stop freaking out. And, you know, I'm just, it's going to take a while to get back down, so I'm just going to speed it up a little bit. We'll just go to four times, and it'll automatically... Oh, we're not going to land. The Space Center is right there. We're going to land about over here, because the, the atmosphere is going to slow us down a lot faster. You can actually see it from here. It's right over there. I have no idea why the capsule is actually freaking out like this. It should not be freaking out. Stop that. Um, the air does uh, put some resistance on the capsule, and it will eventually um, get it oriented so that it is pointing directly in the direction that we're going. Um, I'm just going to activate the parachute now. 
parachute itself won't come out until we hit about, uh, I think it's about 20,000, a little over 20,000. Wow, we're coming in pretty fast. We're hitting about 2 Gs of force. Wow, this capsule should really stop spinning. Oh, there we go. First stage of the parachute. Capsule, stop it. Lovely. And the full part of the parachute will come out once we hit a little under 1,000 meters. It should always come out before you hit the ground, no matter how high the ground is. You can see mountains over here. Um, they sometimes present problems, mostly just scaring you because you think you're going to crash and then the parachute deploys at the last second. But this is pretty good. We can see the, the Space Center over there. We landed pretty close. It doesn't really matter at this point, although in the future they're going to implement uh, part recovery, so you're going to want to make it easier to recover. Anyway, there goes the little, the rest of the pod, or the rest of the capsule, just coming on down. I don't know why I'm getting a little lag, I think it might, might be because I'm running fraps. Oh, goodbye. Deployment. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of lag, this is not usual. Does it still happen if I go into the cockpit? Oh wow, it's really lagging. The cockpit view is nice, you can you know get a view of your parachute, look out the window and oh my god we're gonna crash. Got about eight meters per second, and you can see the radar radar altimeter moving steadily downward. Oh! No more no more lag, cool. How nice. Oh, speed up a little bit. Come on, down to the ground. Get a nice cockpit view of landing. And... Foomp. Landed. Safe on, safe on the ground again. Alright guys, I think that'll wrap it up for this video. Um, I'm not going to do the... Uh, begging for comments, begging for likes. Uh, just uh, hope you guys enjoy. So, I'll see you guys later.